Hi Gemini and welcome to your March 2020 horoscope where as we come into the beginning of this very movable month we see your ruling planet still in the energy of a retrograde so we're still moving a little bit slowly as we come into March kind of chugging along but have no fear the information you've been gathering the resources you've been gathering for yourself are going to be more than useful this month as well we come into the spring equinox this month which is very very exciting and Venus hits the road and heads into the energy of Taurus, lighting up your 12th house space. So I want to start this video by saying not only do I feel like the retrograde has actually been very useful for you, Gemini, but with that Venus moving into this 12th house space, you're going to bring some harmony to some decisions I think that need to be made. There's some charity within you. There's some something that is ready to have a little bit of transformation, but it comes through decisions and actions that you're making for your own greatest good this month. So let's jump in here and talk about what is going on this month, okay? So first and foremost, as we do come in, your ruling planet of Mercury is still in retrograde. And as we start the month, He's been retrograde here in your 10th house. As you can see, the 10th house is kind of loaded. So whenever we have the sun and a lot of busyness at the top of the chart, especially in the 10th house, this is not only pulling our attention to career things or who you are or how you appear in the world, how you show up, what you're known for, maybe even in your community. But it also tells us that the, the, that the decisions you need to make at this time are about ensuring your success. So there's definitely a focus as we come into the month, even with Mercury retrograde here, to paying attention and maybe going back to a job or you've gone back to a job or a career or something like that and you're having to rethink it and make some different decisions or you're going back to maybe a community service project you were doing, something like that is definitely on the agenda. But on the fourth, what's gonna happen is Mercury is gonna retrograde and continue his travels back into the energy of Aquarius which is going to light up your ninth house. Now, when Mercury's in Pisces, even though it's the top of the chart and that's very good for you, right? Um, it also is in fall, so he's not entirely comfortable here. Your thinking maybe has been very paranoid. It's possible that you've just, you've not really been able to logic things, just things are coming out of hiding or out of the woodwork, and that doesn't always make them bad, but it means things are coming to you and through you in a way that they don't when Mercury's in a very logical form. So as Mercury moves back into the energy of Aquarius, even though he's still retrograde, he's totally happy to just not be in Pisces, right? He's like, yes. So you may find yourself, in fact, being a little bit more hypercritical. You're actually thinking more. You're thinking logically. You're thinking quickly. You're thinking in a very future-minded kind of way, even though you've retrograded back to this ninth house. Now, the house of the ninth house is the house of career. I teach it as a house of faith, your beliefs. What is your faith? How much faith are you demonstrating? Are you developing a faith? Um, it could be the law, international travel, publishing, broadcasting, any of these kinds of things. So whatever it is, we know that you're going back to some belief, some strategy that is a big overall big picture kind of strategy and you're having to rethink these things and you're having to get very original. Let me tell you what, Gemini, look back in this last couple months, the information you've been gathering, the circumstances that have been coming up for you where you've just been getting intel, what has it been showing you? Has it been showing you that, hey, Gemini, you need to make decisions about what's best for you. Disconnect from this thing, what's best for you? Or where is your original thinking and how you're gonna publish, market, broadcast, and you will certainly, with Mercury in the energy of Aquarius, be expressing yourself. Don't be surprised if you're not going back to something that has to do with education, expansion, or something like that, and you are having to go back to it, and you're very, very vocal with Mercury moving into this social energy, okay? As well, we've got Venus hitting the road from the energy of Aries and coming home. Totally happy up here in the energy of Taurus. She's in domicile. This rulership here is phenomenal. So Venus is very comfortable lighting up your 12th house space. Now, one of the things that happens when, when Venus is at home and she's in power, you feel more sensual. Right? You feel more sensual, you feel more beautiful, there's a sense of beauty that comes to things. Venus is direct, so she's bringing all things delicious to you. But the biggest thing she wants to do is bring good benefits. So in your 12th house, is this a place of 
um, you need to make a decision of how to disconnect from something because Venus is going to help bring you harmony here. Is this something where you need to see a job or you need to see travel or you need to see some level of expansion from a broader perspective because Venus is going to bring you enough harmony to be able to, soothe, to do that. Also, I think that Venus here in Taurus in general is that you're trying to develop long-term stable relationships or long-term stable money, right? There's some kind of connection in that respect that you're really trying to be present with. More so than that, because it is the 12th house and a house of closure, a house of endings. It's also a house of charity and, and specialized populations. So, you know, with Venus being here, the sun's at the top of your chart. Are you volunteering for something? Are you feeling called, you've got a heavy ninth house, are you feeling called to teach something? You know, what are you coming back to? Because the 12th house will also bring us back to some things. But now we've got this other little motion that happens where Venus, as she's coming into Taurus, she's going to dance this month with the energy of Uranus. And Uranus is our planet of surprise, right? He's like, surprise, ta-da, I've got this new thing for you. But he's also innovation. And it's unexpected innovation. Like, you couldn't see it before, and now something happens and you're able to see it. There is a surprise moment that happens in your world. With Venus and Uranus, here in the 12th house, you may be break free from a situation that is confining. And what can that look like? If there is a job or there is a work situation, you have a loaded 8th house. If this is an intimate situation somehow connected to your money, somehow connected to other people, connected to your fear, connected to whatever, you could be having a spiritual awakening over here and you're breaking free from things as they were and have been. You could be seeing changes in your daily routine for sure because the 12th house will impact the 6th house, right? Another thing I just keep thinking of here in the 12th house is truly because the 12th house, just like the 4th house, does hold a lot of lineage in it. Um, Gemini, if you've been a part of, you know, let's say some kind of line or lineage of people or groupings or something and you don't feel like they're sufficient anymore, you could certainly... You could certainly be breaking free from that. And you could just as easy have like this break of brilliance that comes through for you or a person who walks into your life out of nowhere and you're like, whoa, where'd you come from? They literally would have come out of hiding or the idea literally comes out of hiding. So I think this is so good for you this month, Gemini. What's right for you? What are your ideals? You discovered them in February. So does your life line up with the ideals that you have laid out? And if you haven't laid out those ideals, how will you know which direction is yours to take? right? All right. On the ninth, we're going to have a full moon in the energy of Virgo. So down here, lighting up your fourth house. This again, this 12th house, fourth house business for me this month makes me think there's some connection to your family. And even if it's not direct family, they're right here in front of you. Maybe in your psychological foundation, something that was given to you by your family or your lineage or something like that, you're breaking free with it from it or you're trying to bring some harmony to it in some way, shape, or form because who you'd like to be up here where the sun is at in this public place is a more spiritual version of yourself, a more charitable or more creative, a more crafty version of yourself. But you can't do that if you're trapped under maybe what's down here, okay? So the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we need to make a shift. And this is the fourth house. Home, family, real estate, property, women in your life, your psychological foundation, right? In the energy of Virgo, Virgo's meticulous. It's detail-oriented. It is also a ruled by Mercury energy. So at this particular full moon, something you could be doing is getting into the nitty-gritty details of your foundation. What's happening with your house? What's happening with your living situation? What's happening with your parents? What's happening with your emotional foundation? What's the nitty-gritty of some things that maybe need to be adjusted down there so that you can break free and move towards that sunshine? Now, Virgo, because it's so detailed, oriented is not just going to throw you out there at this full moon and say, good luck, Gemini, you know, fellow Mercury friend, hope you make it. It's not like that at all. Virgo's going to step in here and say, ah, I see the adjustments we need to make. So let's do it one step at a time, right? If you can pick a plan or pick a strategy or make it in this Virgo energy, you can see where you need to allow the adjustments, the endings, the closures, the whatever to happen. And then you take one baby step at a time. You don't eat that whole piece of cake right away. It's just one bite at a time. I mean, it's absolutely, I think, a brilliant full moon to get your goals Um achieved provided you know what your ideals are and provided you know what your goals are so if you don't know 
get pen and paper, sit down, write them out, and let's get clear on where you're moving towards, okay? All right, on the 9th, we have got Mercury still retrograde here, but he's coming out of retrograde, so this is absolutely brilliant. So now on the 9th, we've got some forward motion, right? This is permission to move forward, permission to launch. Whatever the information is you've been gathering that's been coming to you, hopefully you're writing things down. This is mercury energy. You'll be able to see it if you put it on paper, right? Whatever that is, now you can make these um, decisions to come forward, right? Maybe this is a time to um, where with Mercury coming um, direct here in the energy of Aquarius, maybe you are ready to sign some contracts, right? The Aquarian energy, Uranus, is actually living over here in the energy of Taurus. So this could be encouraging, again, this original break free, break free thinking that I've been talking about the entire video, okay? All right, on the 16th now, we've got even more for forward permission because Mercury's not only out of retrograde, but now he's coming back forward into this 10th house space for you. So you're using your subconscious mind. There's a lot of intuition around your career, who I am, where I'm going, where I'm going to be. Trust your intuition because logic is not, is not the business here. And accept things that come out of hiding. Accept things that seem very transient or they're very creative. Where can you put these to good use in this particular 10th house at this time, okay? On the 20th, we see the sun hitting the road and moving over into the energy of Aries. Now, this will bring us to the celebration of our um, spring equinox. Unless, of course, you're in the southern hemisphere, then you're having the autumn equinox. And just happy equinox for everybody. You know what I'm saying? The fact is, my friends, we are changing season, and thank goodness. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling ready to see what's next. I feel like I'm looking at this next season with different eyes, and I can't wait to discover what's out there. So, I hope you're having a little bit of that feeling as well. But the sun here lights up your 11th house. This brings light, heat, light, Life, vitality, motivation to the table. And in the 11th house, this is about new friendships, new connections, new networking, refreshing ones that are already there, right? The sun spent some time over here in the 10th house. So if you have some different ideas around career or something's changing at your job, or God help you if nothing's changing at your job, then you have the option to use this sun energy to say, no, wait a minute, where can I go connect? Can I connect online with people who are like-minded? And therefore it gives me some fire. It puts some hope in me about what I'm doing going forward. Is this an energy where you need to get online and find a new job? Right? Is this an energy where a friend is coming into your life or someone new is coming into your life? And this is your beautiful, fresh beginning with this beautiful new season. It's definitely a lovely social connection. The other thing I think that that encourages you to do is to be serious about looking forward. Where are your action steps that you're taking for your future to move you forward? Right? This is a wonderful, wonderful take charge kind of energy. On the 20th as well, we've got a cool conjunction between Jupiter and Mars happening here. This is the other reason I encourage a fair amount of action on your part. Because when Jupiter and Mars come together, first of all, it's very courageous, right? You just like, it's like it come, comes up in you and you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm gonna go, right? And that's a beautiful energy. And then you put it in the context that they are in the grounded energy of Capricorn, right? So Jupiter is in fall here, but he does have the wisdom of resources. How do I use this? How do I do this? How do I structure this? And Mars is exalted in the energy of Capricorn. So he's like, yep, got you, Jupiter. Let's do it, right? So this is, again, another call to action for you this month in your eighth house. The eighth house is joint resources, right? Is it time to break from a joint resource? Is it time for you to figure out what you're doing with your finances, with your sex life? Where are you at intimately? What are you doing in your astrology, right? What are you doing with your taxes? Any of these things that come in a joint joint resource kind of connection, this is going to give you energy to go for it. I really want you to circle the 20th on your calendar, and this is go for it, green light, let's get after it kind of day and energy, okay? Now, on the 21st, we see Saturn moving out of the energy of Capricorn and moving right to the beginning degrees, zero degrees of Aquarius energy. Now, Saturn rules 
Capricorn, but it also in traditional astrology rules Aquarius as well. So it's not like Saturn is, is frustrated that he's had to come to the Aquarian energy. This is a space that he knows very well as well. So as you travel with this particular energy until July, know that Saturn's got your back because he's pretty comfortable. When we see Saturn and Capricorn, we see him very concrete, right? Like it's just like, oh, Saturn, cold. But we get to see the wise timing of Saturn in the energy of Aquarius because he's forward thinking, right? He's like, hold on, how do I use that resource over there, right? And the example I love is it's like, okay, you've got a mall or you've got a big old piece of land and it's like, okay, in Capricorn, what I did is I, I built a Taco Bell, right? I built a little something because everybody's got to eat, okay? Fair enough. But then he gets into the energy of Aquarius because that Taco Bell is functioning like pristine, right? And then he gets into Aquarius and it's like he's able to hover above the Taco Bell and go, wait a minute, I've got all this other land out here. What am I going to build here? What needs to go here? What can I reorganize here for the future, right? Where can I be original? Oh, man, we don't need another this business. We need that business, but in a different kind of way, right? He starts becoming very, very original. And this is where I actually think that Saturn is a little bit more fun to experience because he's still very serious. And he's going to say to you when he moves in here, Gemini, you got to get serious about your faith. You've got to get serious about your expansion, your beliefs, your foundation, what you're doing for you, what you're giving to the world instead of just what you're taking and receiving. you got to get serious about it. But he also gives you a lot of space to start to see how to do that. Some of you will become teachers. Some of you will become volunteer or community political speakers or something like that because you're naturally feeling a bit more called to it. So whatever it is, you're going to get a taste of it between March 21st and July, then Saturn will retrograde and come back here in um, December, okay? All right, on the 24th, as a birthday present to our Aries friends, we're going to have a new moon happening up here in Aries, which is brilliant. So at this new moon, we're going to plant our seeds of intention to begin something new or give something a fresh start. Remember, the new moon is the darkest part of the moon cycle, so we plant them in the dark. We plant them with full faith that whatever we've planted is going to bloom here. But this is also an energy here in the 11th house in the energy of Aries that says, you've done the planning. We're in motion now, right? Aries is not standing here continuing to make a plan. Aries is in motion. You have got to understand that in a social way, in the social zone, whether it's your social media, whether it's uh, business networking, whether it's connecting with people in your community, whether it's making a long-range plan, it's time to act. So you are absolutely put in a position of forward motion here. And what you're going to act on are the decisions that not only take you forward, but allow you to have freedom as well. All right, Gemini, it's a hell of a month. I really think that it is. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Please let me know what manifests for you um, in the comment section down below here. I'm not sure who you are, but somebody here is getting ready to take on some pretty heavy, maybe volunteer work or community service or something. So if that's you, just let me know down in the comment section down below. I am sending every one of you a whole bunch of love, and I look forward to seeing you in April. Bye, everyone.